This is example 8 in our partial fractions topic. Example 7, we had a look at the first of our irreducible quadratic denominators. So this is the second one, and we have a wee bit of extra work to do even to start this one here, uh, expressing partial fractions x squared minus 2x plus 2 over x cubed minus 1, because x cubed minus 1 is not factorized yet. It's not an irreducible quadratic, so we need to start off by doing a little bit of factorizing. It's a cubic expression, so we actually have to think about how to factorize a cubic expression, and the way in which you may be familiar would be to do some synthetic division. We can write in our coefficients, 1 for the x cubed term, 0 for the x squared term, 0 for the x term, and negative 1 for the constant term. We have to uh, factorise it by a factor of the constant negative 1, so we've only got two uh, possible options. Uh, and if you notice, I, if I select 1 and then go through the process, bring down that 1, multiply by 1 and add, multiply by 1 and add, multiply by 1 and add, then I get at the end here 0, which is my remainder. If we uh, are substituting 1 in uh, to the expression x cubed minus 1 and we get a remainder of 0, it tells us that x equals 1 is a solution or x minus 1 is a factor. So we can write that down as the remainder equals 0. Then we can say that x minus 1 is a factor. And more so, we can say that this is 1, 1, 1 here. We know means that the, as well as x minus 1 being a factor, the other factor will be 1x squared plus 1x plus 1. In other words, we can say that x cubed minus 1 is the same as x minus 1 multiplied by x squared plus x plus 1. So that's a little bit of synthetic division, as you might have done previously. So now we can rearrange, or now we can swap that in. Let's start almost again. Our rational uh, function becomes x squared minus 2x plus 2 divided by uh, our newly factorized expression x minus 1 multiplied by x squared plus x plus 1. It doesn't take you long to see that x squared plus x plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic. We cannot factorize that any further. Therefore, we're ready to create our partial fractions template. Our first fraction will be to do with the x minus 1 linear factor. So we can write that down as a divided by x minus 1. And we know from the previous example that when you have an irreducible quadratic, then we need to have some kind of term in x on the top, bx, and also the potential for a constant. And we'll put a plus sign between it. So that's us got our partial fractions template ready. We can follow all the usual steps. Multiply through by the coefficient. <laughs> multiply through by the denominator. Which on the left hand side will give us just a numerator. x squared minus 2x plus 2. And on the left hand side if we do our multiplication on the right, we can see that for the first fraction, the x minus 1 terms will cancel and leaving us with a multiplied by x squared plus x plus 1. And for the second fraction, the quadratic term will cancel, leaving us with bx plus c in a bracket multiplied by x minus 1. So here we have our equation. That's the thing that we're going to keep referring back to. And by now, we should be quite familiar with the technique of selecting values for x to simplify it or equating 
terms on the left and the right. So if x is x minus one at the very end there, we can select x to be one because then that term will go to zero and that whole end product will be zero. So if x is one, one squared minus two plus two is equal to a times well one squared is one plus one plus one and we know that that second term is going to go to zero. The left hand side there is just one and we've got three a on the right hand side which means that a is going to have the value of one third. Now we want to try and find one of the other values, b and c. Uh, we can see that if because the b is multiplied by x, if we select x to be 0, then the b term will disappear and we'll have a, an a equation in terms of a and c. We already know what a is, so that should work. So let's let x equal 0 left hand side we're left with the constant 2 uh, on the right hand side we're left with a and just 1 in that bracket there and then in the second term here we've got bx plus c well if x is 0 then we're just left with c multiplied by 0 minus 1 which is negative 1 Simplifying that, we get 2 equals a minus c, and we know that a is one third. Therefore, c has the value of one third minus 2, and therefore c is negative 5 thirds. Okay, remember that 2 is, in terms of thirds, would be 6 thirds. And therefore 1 subtract 6 is negative 5. So we've got a is one third, we've got c equals negative five thirds, and we just need to find a way of uh, working out b. So I'm back at my main equation here, and I could do a number of things, or two things particularly. I could substitute in another value for x, which is not zero or one. I'll have an equation in terms of a, b, and c, which I can then uh, substitute in. Or, as we've been finding out, <coughs> we could equate one of the um, powers on the left and on the right. And if we see here that the b, x here, if that multiplies with the x, that's going to make an, a b, x squared term. It's the only x squared term in that particular product and at the beginning the a multiplied by x squared is going to give me an ax term and they have to add together to match up with the x squared term on the left which is just 1x squared. So we're going to equate our x squared terms so on the left hand side we had 1x squared. On the right hand side, we've got ax squared. And then later on, we're going to have bx squared. So we can really just simplify that to 1 equals a plus b because it's only the coefficients that we really need. If 1 is equal to a plus b, we know already that a is 1 third which means that b is going to take the value of 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. So that has got all three values here. Um, a is 1 third, b is 2 thirds, and c is negative 5 thirds. So that's going to allow us to write our solution. So we started off with, what did we start with? x squared minus 2x plus 2. x 
x squared minus 2x plus 2 over x cubed minus 1. We set out to make a couple of fractions. Uh, the first one uh, was going to be what x minus 1. And the second one was going to be x squared plus x plus 1. A is the constant term above that first fraction. A is a third. Now, when we've got a fraction like that, we could write it as that, but that's a fraction in a fraction, which um, isn't really a done thing. So what we do is we actually just already put the num one numerator here, and we bring the three denominator down to join the other denominator and just make sure that you multiply everything by three. So we put a wee bracket around the expression, and there we have... Um, our third. There's the third there. A third of 1 over x minus 1 is the same as um, 1 over 3 times x minus 1. And in the second fraction, it was going to be b x plus c. So again, I could write here uh, 2, oops, I could write here 2 thirds minus 5 thirds all over that, but we know that those three in the denominator is going to actually end up down below anyway, so if I were to add my three here, then all I really need to do is to have my two, sorry, that should be x as well, it should be two x minus five, so all I need to do is actually write my two x minus five, it is positive two, so I'm happy to keep my plus sign there, and there we have uh, solution, our partial fractions, 1 over 3 multiplied by x minus 1 plus 2x minus 5 over 3 times x squared plus x plus 1. There we go.